Hey everyone, and welcome to the Gymnashare Conference. I'm delighted to have Robbie Adair with us. Me and Robbie have worked together for a long time in a variety of different formats. And Robbie now runs OS Training, where she does a lot of great training for Joomla and also other platforms, and also tools that are related to Joomla. And she's going to talk to us today about FileZilla, which is basically the 3,000 pound gorilla of the FTP world. It's by far the most popular tool that people use for logging into their sites via FTP or SFTP. And Robbie's going to give us some power tips for Joomla users. Robbie, welcome. Hi, thanks, Steve. Thank you for the introduction and, and thank everybody for coming. It's a uh, well, great turnout. I'm very excited. Great conference that you're putting on here, Steve. Uh, thank you very much for uh, having me speak. And I'm very excited today to talk about FileZilla. Um, and just before we start, just a little bit of housekeeping. We do have the chat and I will occasionally look at the chat. There is also a Q&A if you want to drop questions, questions in there for at the end. I'll look at those questions at the end of the, at the session though, because I might not see them while we're going along. Um, and then also you can raise your hand inside of your, in the little panelist list there. And sometimes I may ask you to raise your hand because I want to ask you a question and just kind of survey uh, the group that's watching, watching the event. So uh, just quick little bit about me. I do a lot of speaking. I used to do a lot of speaking at in-person conferences. So I probably have met some of you at some point over the years. Um, I speak at various conferences, uh, started in the Joomla world, obviously, and then also PHP, WordPress, just a business conferences, different conferences out there, which I always think is great because then it just shares that uh, um, among all the other groups and lets everybody know about all the other tools too. So I have a personal website. I also have my business, my agency that I've had for 18 and a half years or whatever, where we do build websites and we create all types of digital media. And then I uh, also about four or five years ago bought the Fabric Project, which is a Joomla extension that allows you to build applications inside of Joomla. And then also, as Steve mentioned, uh, OS training, where we do all types of training and we cover Joomla, the major platforms, Joomla, Drupal, WordPress, but then all those little tools associated with it, uh, with video courses and books and tutorials in our blog. And this coming year, we're also going to start at offering some online live classes. So watch out for that. Um, I have in the past been uh, one of the organizers of Joomla Day Houston, and then we turned it to Joomla Day Texas, so I need to update that slide, I see. And then I'm very excited to announce that uh, I'm working with a group, a great group of people, and we are working on a Joomla Day USA. And it is, there is a save the date page that you can go to if you go to jdayusa.com. I should have put that on here. I'll put it, somebody can type that in the chat, jdayusa.com. And that way you can see the date and put that on your calendar and join us when that happens. Yes, Steve, go ahead. I just want to bump in to say that Robbie does a great job with these events. And um, I think I'm still wearing my, my <laughs> Juma Day Houston t-shirt for this event. Awesome. <laughs> cool deal. And then also uh, part of the, I've been a co-coordinator of the JUG uh, here in Houston over, over the years. So that that is enough about me. Now let's talk about what we're going to talk about in this session, because I am notorious for going over. So I'm trying really hard to stay on track so I get all the information to you in the time we have. So what we're going to do in this session is we're going to first just do a brief uh, intro to FileZilla, which most of you probably are, have a brief intro already, but I just like to do that in case there are some people that are new uh, to the Joomla world and to web website world and all of that. And so we'll talk about that just a second. And then I'm going to talk about some of the tips that I have found over the years. I've used FileZilla for years on, on PC, on Mac. Um, I have just used it. I really don't even know how many years now I've used it, but a very long time. It is a fantastic tool. It has an open source. There's also a pro we'll talk about, um, but it it's just, it's, it's steady eddy. It always works. And so it's just been a great tool. I haven't had to look for an alternative, but the more I used it, the more I was like, Hey, what does this do? What does this do? You know, because you're always looking for ways of speeding up your productivity. And so these are some of the tips that I have started uh, over the years, adding into my use of FileZilla. And I thought, Hey, maybe other people don't know about these little things you can do inside of FileZilla to make your life easier uh, when you're working on websites. So <clears throat> we'll talk about organizing the files, the site manager. We'll talk about controlling where you start when you actually connect an FTP session. 
We will also talk about syncing and comparing files and folders, which is really a cool little tool. And to be in a free application is pretty amazing because I have some other really heavy end uh, syncing tools and they cost a lot of money. And so it's really cool that it has this built in into uh, FileZilla. And then also talking about changing the editor <laughs> application in particular, how to change your editor on, on uh, FileZilla, which is probably one of our most popular tutorials actually too, is because everybody's like, what? I can change my editor? Fantastic. So we're going to look at that. And again, uh, shout out to uh, Steve and, and the guys over at Joomla Shack for putting this conference together. And I, and I shouldn't have said guys because I'm very sexist. All the people over at Joomla Shack. So um, what is FileZilla? So this is a quick little overview of what it is. But um, while I'm talking about this, if you can just raise your hand if you already use FileZilla. I would be interested to kind of survey our group here. Oh, I'm seeing lots of hands going up. Oh, <laughs> wow, that's pretty amazing. I would say we're already at over half of the attendees are using it. So great, great. Oh, good. Then I hope that you're all going to find this uh, very useful. Um, for those few of you that are not raising your hand, uh, you may use other FTP applications, but uh, you may not use one at all. So just really quickly, this is a free FTP application. FTP, which stands for File Transfer Protocol. It's how we move files from one place on our machine, let's say, to a server where we have our site hosted, right? So we have to be able to move those files up and we need to move those files down. So uploading and downloading. So this application, like I said, has a free version. The top uh, thing you see there on my slide, FileZillaProject.org, that is the free open source version of FileZilla. And then below that is FileZillaPro.com. Now, FileZilla itself, the, the free versions also supports FTP over TLS, which is a secure, uh, a secure FTP, as well as SF, F, F, SFTP, that's very difficult to say, um, which is secure uh, FTP, so secure file transfer. So what's the difference? Well, if I just normal FTP, there's no, com there's no compression of these files, no, no ossification of these files before they get sent up, right? So I'm not securing them. I'm not encrypting them and then decrypting them when I, once I get them on the other side. So secure FTP, whether it's over TLS or SFTP are typically what you want to do because if you don't, none of your files that you're moving through the uh, FTP are secured or encrypted. And so they could be stolen, things like that. So are there times you have to use just plain FTP? I've had it because I've had some servers that just didn't support anything but that. But I always want to try and use a secure FTP if possible. Now, the pro version is if you need special protocols to go to certain types of servers out there. Like a lot of people now have start, started seeing the advantage of like using the S3 for storage. And so you need a special little connector with that. And so they have FileZilla Pro that gives you all kinds of connectors, Dropbox, Amazon S3, the Microsoft OneDrive. And so that way you can create it like just a regular old session and connect to those and drag and drop files back and forth. And so that's what FileZilla is. So now let's take a look at some of these little tips that I've found over the years help me. Now, if you just have one website you're working on, you have just one little site connection in your uh, site manager, this isn't going to really be of any use to you. But if you are a web developer and you have multiple websites that you're connecting to, then this is a oh my goodness, this really will save your, your brain because you're going to scroll. I, I can't tell you how many pages of scrolls I have of sites. Um, and so most of those though, there's, there's groupings I can do with them, whether they be that there's multiple different connections I have for one single client, or maybe it's uh, multiple connections to different storage places that I have. There's ways I can organize these and you can organize those just like you do your files and folders. You can actually create folders in your site manager and group your connections together. And it's super easy. After we're done going through these slides, I promise you I'm also going to open up FileZilla and actually do some of these things so you can see how easy it is to do them. But wow, it really saves me a ton of time to have these all organized like that. Now, let's look at the next thing, which is really cool too. So you know you can set up a connection, right? So we can say, here's where, I, this is my local machine, obviously, and here's where I want to connect to. And on FileZilla, once we connect, we see our, our, um, local files on one side and our remote files on the other. 
Well, we can actually create some bookmarks that quickly take us, take us to folders, whether it be on our side or on the remote side. And this just saves you time. For instance, you'll see my little example on this slide is how many times do you go to administrator, comma, Kiba, back or components? I missed that in there, sorry. I actually just typed this in so that I didn't have uh, real information in there. But so I would go to administrator, components, comma, Kiba, into the backup folder. Well, I mean, that's what four clicks, five clicks for me to get all the way there. Whereas I can just make a little bookmark that says backup folder, boom, it takes me right there. Say, I mean, saving five clicks, you all know, we, we click all day long, right? Saving five clicks at a time, every time I connect to a website, that's a lot of clicks at the end of the day for me, I can tell you. So hopefully that helps you. And I'm gonna show you how to set up those bookmarks. And one uh, little thing I wanna note on bookmarks is there's both um, site specific. So like in this example right here, this is a site specific uh, bookmark, right? I'm looking at um, a particular site that I want to go into that folder. So I've assigned it to a particular site, but there's also global bookmarks. Um, I use a global bookmarks, my, personally, I use the global bookmarks more for, um, for my local side because it doesn't matter which side I'm connected to, this bookmark works with all sites for me to say, oh, go to my sites folder or go to my downloads folder or go to my desktop. I can very quickly navigate to those over here without having to go through the little tree thing to find the folder I'm looking for. So I use the global ones more for the remote side of things than I do the the the, I'm sorry, for the local side rather than the remote, but you could do it for either one. The other thing is controlling our start directories. So for many of you, you probably, when you connect to your server, it may actually on the remote side, put you into the proper folder. But sometimes it won't. It depends on the type of server that you're connecting to and the login um, that they've given you may go actually into a, particularly, particularly on Linux servers, it may take you into your user folder and you've got to navigate up and then navigate through, you know, to get to the public folder, to get to your website. And so, you know, you're doing a lot of little navigating, getting to where you need to be. <clears throat> so if you have to do this on a connection every time you connect, you don't have to do that. You can actually set up where you want it to go, which folder exactly you want it to go to when you connect. So like in this little example I have, there was a demo that was up online. So it's, it was in a subfolder. So every time I want to go and move some things up and down from that demo, I would have to go and, you know, connect to the server, then go out of the folder I was in and go into another folder. Anyway, this allowed me to set it up. And one thing I want to also point out about this is you can set up that start directory for both sides. So again, on the local side, I had that demo set up somewhere on my local side, right? Where all the, had all the files that were associated with it. And then I had that folder on my remote side. When I use that connection, that's, that site manager connection, it automatically puts me in the right place on both sides. So I don't have to do any navigating to start with. I'm just boom, right there in it. And so that's why you may say that you may have multiple connections to the same website. So you can see I have multiple connections to the same website, the same server, but I may have a demo site. I may have a staging site. I have the live site. I may have some other little thing that we're hosting on there that's not even a website. It's something else. It's an application. And so I may want to have multiple sites as opposed to always just connecting with the one site manager and having to navigate through my folders. I just set up multiple connections in my site manager to where those are going to go. And so then I just connect to exactly what I want. It also helps you with, saves you from overriding the wrong Joomla site if you have multiple Joomla sites on the same server in like subfolders and things like that. You don't want to get confused and overwrite the wrong one, right? So by having those separate site manager instances, that's going to help you. And then lumping them all together under a folder makes them quick and easy for you to find in your site manager. All right. Syncing. Oh, I love this one. I just absolutely love this one. Because again, remember, we're going to see local and we're going to see remote. So let's say I've connected to a Joomla site and over here on the right side on my remote side, I go, oh, I wanna go to administrator. I wanna to go to uh, components. I wanna to go to Kama Kiva. I wanna to go to backups. Um, and so I did that. Guess what? Even, even if I had my start directory as the root of my website on my local machine over here, I've gotta go do that same thing over here. Click, 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 click. Well, that's a real pain. 
So if I want to have both sides, now this is this is as long as these files and folders sync up, meaning they are the same type of files and fo uh, folders on either side, there was a match. So in other words, I'm in the root of my website here, I'm in the root of my website here, or I'm in a demo folder here, I'm in a demo folder here. So that what's on either side should pretty much match up, right? I can do synchronized browsing. So that means when I open administrator over here, it opens administrator over here. I don't have to do it on both sides. It is going to track. Now, what that does mean is that I can't open a different folder over here than over here. So it doesn't work for everything, but it does work sometimes when you know this is just an exact pairing and I just need to navigate through these folders together on either side. It's great. So again, this may be a reason to have one connection that has syncing on and one that doesn't. So you don't have to turn it on and off but you can turn it on and off too. So that is our uh, syncing and it's really cool. So if you have that Joomla site that you're working on locally and you're also updating things remotely, this is gonna save you a ton of time. The other thing is file comparison. Now, this is one of the things I was telling you, it's really cool that this is in a free product. That's pretty amazing. It is not, I will say, it's not as highly detailed as some of the bigger uh, syncing applications are out there that'll do a, a very detailed comparison and tell you literally what the differences are and things like that and show you that. This is going to color uh, color them when we, um, when we uh, are comparing them. One thing that I, I like to point out here, though, is that when you do do the directory comparison here, that you need to also adjust if you have different a different time zone on your server than your local machine because otherwise it's always going to see the times off on the files okay which we'll see an example of because i think my example i didn't sync to the server time so we'll see that, that it's marking those files um, but you can offset by whatever it needs to be so if it's a you know hours off or if it's 30 minutes off uh, you can offset those and this is what the directory comparison, like I said, it doesn't give you super details on that, but you can see in this example, I've got files on my local side over there that exactly match the files on the remote side. So they're just plain white. But then I've got a green file. Now that file, it does exist on my remote, I mean, on my local, excuse me, and on my remote, but on the remote, that file has been changed. And you can see, I can look at the file size and see that the file size is different. So I know that there is definitely something different about that file. Now, it also could have just been the date and time. That's why I was talking about before the date and time offset if you need it. But in this instance, I can definitively tell that the file size is different. So that readme up there has something in it that my local readme doesn't. OK, and then the yellow says these don't exist there. OK, and so um, they are. Um, Oh, and by the way, that newer one, it is my mod date on that one that is showing green. I apologize. It would be red if all it saw was a file size difference. But again, I didn't have the sync of the, I didn't have the offset on this one. So all it saw was that the time stamp and, and date were different. So it was telling me, hey, because it can't show me both colors at one time, right? So it picks which one. And so it hit, it hit first to say it's a newer file by its date. But if they had the exact same date on my local and the remote and the file size was different on either side, it would color it red. And in my example there, I only showed you on one side um, flagging differences, but it does it both ways. So if the readme on the, the remote, I mean, excuse me, the local side had been different, then it would have shown as being the newer one over here. So it does flag both sides there, just so you know. All right. So another, this is... This is just kind of a, again, when you have multiple connections to the same server in particular, and, and FileZilla is really cool because it allows you to have multiple connections open at one time if you want. So I can have one connection that's open to my demo. I can have one connection that's open to, well, that was bad. One connected to my staging site and one connected to my live site, right? But I need to know when I'm flipping those tabs really quickly, I wanna make sure I don't override on the live if I'm just working on my demo. And so you can actually background color different connections, different colors. So like in this example, I used orange, right? So when I connect to that server with that site manager connection, I turn the background orange. So now if I have another one open there and I go between the two, one may have a white background, one may have an orange background, or one may have a blue and one an orange, whatever. You can change those colored backgrounds. But that way, when you have multiple uh, instances open and you're flipping between the tabs, it makes it real easy to your brain to go, oh, this is the this is the live one or this is the the demo one. 
And by the way, I, I will show you where these are, but on my slides, I do also have the example of where I am in the site manager. And you can see that this is on the general tab where you put in your actual login information. Those other syncing tools were on the advanced tab. So, and we will take a look at those inside of FileZilla here in just a minute. The other thing that is, I mean, as much as we'd like to say we never just edit files on the server, that we always are good and we do things on our, on our local side and then upload them, we know that's not the truth. We know that sometimes we log into those servers and make changes to files, um, particularly PHP files or HT access files, that we, we log in and we edit those files. By default, when you install FileZilla, it is going to use the default editor, right? So like on uh, Mac, it's text edit. On PC, it's text. Oh, I'm, I forget the name of the one that's on. Anyway, the, de the default Windows text editor. And so those are what it's going to get by default. But you can go and change that. And you can see right here, I'm in the settings. And I, I will open this up and show you when we open up FileZilla. But I'm in the settings. And I just went to file editing. Now, if you go to file type associations underneath that, you can actually get very detailed. You can say, if it's an image, I want it to open in this. If it's a text file, I want it to open in this. If it's a PHP, I want it to open in PHP Storm. So you can get very specific about what application you want. But if you just overall, we're just changing our text editor, you can do that at the file editing level there. And so that means all things that can open in a text editor will open in which one you picked. And you can see, I this is on my Mac. So that's why it looks like this, um, that I have sublime text as my default editor because it has color coding, right? So that's that's the real downfall of just a regular text editor is if you also want that color coding or the assist in coding, that happens in other editors typically, not your dummy text editors. So you can actually change that and it makes it so much easier if you have to open up and make a change in a PHP file because you see the color coding there. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to flip over. I'm going to switch screens here and we're going to look at FileZilla now. All right. So just to kind of go through these things that we talked about in there, this is where my site manager is. Now, you know, you can always do a quick drop down, but I like to open it up usually because I'm looking for certain ones. So you can see in this example, by the way, this is not my real list. It's been dummified so that I'm not giving away any passwords or anything for people, but you can see how long this, this was this before I started cleaning things up and using folders. Now, if you looked at my, my working one, it's very clean. I've got folders with subfolders and things like that so that I can keep these all nice and organized and find them faster. And I'm not scrolling for days because also by the way, it puts these things in alpha order by uh, caps and then lowercase. And so sometimes you're looking in your alpha and you're like, it's not there. And if you keep scrolling down in the lowercase, oh, it's there. So I like organizing all of that. So it's really quick for me to get to things. So you can see here, I've got these folders. If I wanted to, like here's three different uh, CIOCs, right? And with dummy information. Um, if I wanted to have these all grouped together though, all I have to do is go to my sites. So just like in just like in Windows or Mac, you pick the folder you want the subfolder to fall in. So I say, I want a new folder. We're gonna call this one the CIOC. Oops, oh, because I've already created one, I guess, in my, let's see. What am I gonna do CIOC demo? There we go. So you can see here it is. And so I can actually now, go in here and move these into that folder and say, okay, I want all of these to be under that subfolder. So now I have actually organized them into one. So now you can see how you can take a very long site manager list. And if you organize it down, you could get this very short and easy to find things, quick to find things. If I connect to something, so let's just look at, I've got one of these little examples here that we can, um, look at, if I connect, now let's look at our advanced tab. So over here is where I can set a background color. The advanced is where I can set start directory. So you can see right here, I've actually got this where it looks on my computer where I have my site and it looks on the remote, um, yes, the remote computer where my site is hosted in a subfolder. Okay, so here is the connection. I don't have syncing or directory comparison on just yet, and I don't have a background color, but we're just going to connect to this. So you can see we've connected. We've got over here is our public side, right? And over here is our remote. You can see that it went and it opened up this folder and it opened up this folder over here. Now, 
I also, let's, uh, I'm going to kill this connection now. And we're going to look at that one more time, because if you look at this example, I have a background color as well as I'm not going into a certain directory. I'll connect to that. Now you can see how it looks different, right? And so if I were to also connect to this one and I'm gonna allow it to um, create it in a new tab and not just replace this one. So I can actually have two FTP instances running. Now, when I flip between these, you can see how easy it is for me to tell which one I'm on, right? Because one, I might make my live green, like, woo, this is live or red, maybe, I don't know, so that I know, woo, this one is a live one, this one is not the live one. Um, and so that way I can see, but you see how this one, this one, I was already remotely where I was supposed to be. So that wasn't the best example. If I'd have gone somewhere else and then connected, it would not have moved to this folder that I wanted it to be in. Now, and then let me, uh, close that one. We're going to close this connection one more time. And I'm going to, we'll just go up here to some other folder. So we've got some other folder open here. And let's look at that site manager one more time. Let's look at this thing called a bookmark. So a bookmark happens after the connection happens. Okay. So in other words, this connection, remember I showed you, I wasn't going to any particular directory at all on the, on my local side or on my remote side. And so this is just going to connect. But this bookmark that I have underneath there, this bookmark says, hey, there's a presentation on this, this machine on the local side, and there's a presentation on the remote. When I hit that, I'm going to pop into that one. I can also on bookmarks, by the way, just like I can on site connections, I can use synchronized browsing and directory comparison. I'm going to turn these off right now because I want to show you those in a second, but we'll, we'll now connect. And I used, I could connect directly with that bookmark. So you see how it threw me into the presentation folder on both the local and the remote. Or let me kill this one again and go somewhere else here. And let's just say we had, oh, let's just say we were connected to our site here. So I'm connected. Notice I'm not in that, on either side, I'm not in that uh, demo. But if I look at my um, bookmarks, there's a drop down here, or I could open that site manager back up and pick the bookmark. So either way, but once I hit that bookmark, let me cancel that one, I'll use it under here. Once I hit that bookmark, it syncs up both my local and my remote to that folder, the folders that I told it to on either side. Okay. Now let me, I'm going to turn off this background color um, as well on, well, actually we'll just use this. No, I'm going to turn off this one's background color. So let's say none on this one's background color. And we, oh no, let's do this one. Sorry. Cause this one I have a start. And so I have a, I have a directory on my local. I have a directory on my remote. I'm going to turn on synchronized browsing. So that's the first thing we're going to look at. So let's connect to this. Let's abort the one. So I'm only going to have one connection open right now. Notice it took me to my start folders on either side. And there is some matching there, right? You see, there's, I don't have the whole thing downloaded, but you can see here's my administrator folder. If I were to navigate to the administrator folder over here, look what happened on my, my local. If I open up components, look what happened on my local. And vice versa. If I open up something over here, Look what happened on the remote. I have synchronized my browsing. So either side that I move around on, I'm going to automatically match to the other side. So if you know you're going in and out of Joomla folders to make changes on both sides, this is going to save you a lot of time because you don't have to keep matching it on either side there. You can just sync them all up. So the other thing we can look at is comparison. So let's... Um, let me open this up one more time because what I want us to do is let's use this bookmark because that's less files for us to look at here. And I'm going to, one, I'm going to use a synchronized browsing on it and I'm going to use directory comparison. So let's connect to that and we're just going to abort and do that. Now you can see I've got some colors going on here, right? So if I look at this index.html, it's green. Now that means it's newer, right? <clears throat> it actually does have a file size difference and it might have a, it also has a time difference, a three minute time difference. So this time is when this was edited to change its size from the one that's on my local. So this one is newer than what's on my local. If I look at the assets folder here, there's something in that assets folder that's newer, but now I have to dig in to see what that is. Remember I have my synced browsing on. So if I open up assets, now I can see, oh, all of these folders have got something new and oh, look over here. There's a yellow file that says, hey, 
it doesn't exist on my local side. It's only on the remote side. So that's a yellow one. So this is only on the remote server. I don't have a copy of it on my local server. Now, and by the way, I guess I should have, I just assumed that so many of you use FTP, you know that to drag and drop is all you have to do to create a download or an upload. So I'll download that file and you'll see there I've got it. Now, why did it go green when it moved over here? Remember, I don't have my time synced between these two uh, servers. And so that's why this is not quite the best example of the, the uh, color coding. And there have been some others where, like I said, this is a quick and dirty version of comparison. So it does exact, it does kind of what I want it to do. It shows me when there's, it sees something new. And then once I've got my time set between them, I, I can then look through and see what is the real difference going on here. OK, and if I made a change to a file, I would also immediately see some sort of reflection to that. So if I were to edit this file and by the way, if I were to say view edit, that's what launches whatever um, editor that you are using. So if I hit view edit, this would open it up in whatever editor I have associated with that. So let's look. Oh, wait. One more thing right before I go show you how to change that editor, which the other thing, remember I told you about bookmarks, is that in bookmarks, there's two types. There's site specific, and that's what we've looked at here. But there's also, I can make global, uh, global bookmarks. The way you do those is if you go under bookmarks and you say, you can't do it in the site manager. Site manager is only going to let you do site specific bookmarks. But if you come to your bookmarks drop down and you say, add a bookmark, when you add this, you can pick, do I want this to be global or site specific? If it's global, what that means is it will always be available for me, no matter what site I am connected to. This is just a global bookmark. And like these two that I have, let me manage those and I can show you. So here's my global and here's my site specific. This one takes me remotely to my desktop. This one takes me to the downloads folder. So I can very quickly move around on my local machine, no matter who I'm connected to, I can go, oh, I've got that in the downloads or, oh, I've got that on my desktop. Now, this, it also does work on remote, but I've had some, personally, I've had some issues with making it work on all of my sites with the remote. So I usually, like when I'm wanting to set up, make uh, direct bookmarks on my remote side, I normally just go ahead and make them site specific, but you may have a better experience of that than I did. But that's that's typically I like the I love the globals for all of the the local movement. Um, but you, you can play around with them and see. Just remember, if you want to make a global one, you need to go to where you add the bookmarks here. Oh, another quick thing for making bookmarks that you might find handy is let's say let me actually go back to this so it puts me in the same folder here. Let's just say I had. Um, I wanted to have different ones on either side um, for my starts. Let me actually then kill this because I had a synchronization on on that one. So let's pick one I don't have sync on. Um, actually, this one doesn't have sync. So this one doesn't have sync and I haven't set uh, directories or anything like that, right? So let's connect to this one. Now I could now over here on the side, let's say I want it to go to my desktop folder. So this is set to desktop. Maybe I, there's actually a folder inside of that. Like I'll pick this one. And then on this side, I want to go into a specific uh, page as well. Let's just, let's say cash for whatever reason, but let's just say that's where I want to go. Now, when you go to create a bookmark here to add a bookmark, look at this right here, your local, and your remote, it's captured where you are for you. And so now all you'd have to do is name this bookmark and save it. And this one I would probably make site specific, right? Because, well, this one actually wouldn't have to, I guess, because public just cache that might fit on others, but this is a specific connection I have going on. And so I probably would make this a site specific, name the, name the uh, bookmark, decide if I need synchronization or comparison or anything like that and save it. And so we'll just do demo and we will say, okay. And now you'll see I have two different ones here. Or if we look under the site manager, you can see there's the other bookmark that we just created and it has those in it. So you don't even have to like type in the pass if you don't want to. You can just con make a connection, go to the pass you want, make a bookmark. It's really simple. Okay, so that was global and site specific. The last thing that uh, I want to show you guys, and then we will look if there's any questions, and that is how to set up your default editor. So if you go under your, and I don't know what I'm looking at here. There we go. 
<laughs> Sorry, I, I'm switching between Mac and, and PC all the time. And so sometimes I'm like, wait, which menu is it under? Okay, so under or editing our settings for FileZilla here. And that'll open up. And I'm hoping you guys can all see that pop up there. No problem. You'll see there are a lot of settings, by the way. So there's even, there's way more tips I could give you guys on FileZilla. FileZilla. I mean, there's a ton of things you can do in here that we just don't take the time sometimes to set up. And I hope you now will have some little new tools you'll take the time to set up and it'll speed you up. So here's the file editing. And you literally, by default, it's on um, use, use a system's default editor for text files. So maybe you already have your system default set up to the editor you want, in which case, you're already getting the right one when you say edit a file. But if you're not, and you want FileZilla to use a different editor, like a color coding editor, like Sublime Text or Text Wrangler, or, oh my goodness, there's so many of them out there. There's so many great tools for text editors that have color coding. Then you just say, I wanna use a custom editor, browse, find it on your Mac or PC. It's on both platforms, by the way, in the exact same place in settings. So exact, looks exactly the same on both platforms. And you just browse, find the application you want and save it. And that's it. And now this will be the default editor when I right click and edit a file, whether it's remote or local, by the way, that's the same, same editor it's going to use for those. So, all right. Hey, I think I actually made it so that we will have time for um, some questions. Let me uh, switch my share back over to. Awesome, Robbie. Uh, um, I'll be happy to read the questions, and we had quite a few. Okay. Okay. Great. And so you can concentrate on the answer. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> and and people were talking throughout it. They were really appreciative of um, of all the hints and tips you were sharing. One question is: Does Akiba Backup have any kind of any kind of integration with FileZilla? Uh, I, I would probably start making up answers if I answered that. I do not think so, but yeah, I might... don't know that question. What kind of integration would you, what kind of integration would you want with, with FileZilla? Mm. That's what I don't understand what we would integrate. Hey, it might be great. <laughs> we'll be sending this, this over to Nicholas after this. <laughs> yeah, that was my feeling too. I think um, <laughs> they do have some integration with Joomla's command line interface, but oh, okay. not with FileZilla. Okay. I got you. Question from Joe. Why do some files, for example, CSS files, change sizes when you transfer to the server? Is it sometimes a, a CR slash LF difference? You know, I have had that exact same thing. And I'm not sure myself because it has uh, it stumbled me up a few times as well. I don't have it on all servers, but I do have it on some servers where it looks like it is a different file size. And it's usually it's just off a little bit kilobytes, but it looks different. And I know, like I've just uploaded or I've just downloaded and I know they're different. I'm not sure. I don't think it's a FileZilla error. I think you're exactly right, Joe, that it is something happening on the server that just displays it differently. Maybe it's the, you know, I'm not really sure, but I, I have, I have seen that exact same thing, not all servers, but some servers. So I do know what you're talking about. I don't know what it could be. I mean, Steve, your suggestion, maybe the, I don't know if that was in the question or what you suggest, it could be the answer, but I'm not certain of that. But I do know, I have seen that. Question from Tony. Uh, does FileZilla have like an, like an address book for all your sites? That was Site Manager. That was exactly what I was, when I popped open Site Manager, that's the address book as it were. That's where you create those connections and then they're all in your Site Manager then. And so then you can organize them into the, the folders and everything. That is what I would call your address book, as it were. That's where everything is. And, and uh, one little note too, I don't have a slide on it here, but I, all, I do like to tell people this, and it may be a question that's coming up because it typically is. Like I showed you, I use it on both PC and on Mac, but they're independent XML files for all of that site manager information on both machine, but you can export out of one and import into the other. So that way you can match your site managers across different machines, or let's say you're on a team and we all work on the same sites together. I literally can just go export out my site manager and send that XML to somebody else, or I can go export my site manager and clip my edit your XML and only share the ones I want to send to that, to that person. A question from Walter. Mm -hmm. Is there any advantage to going with the pro version of FileZilla? Great question, Walter. The, the biggest advantage is that, I, you know, we see more and more people that are starting to take advantage of online storage, like the S3 or AWS they're using, uh, which AWS and S3 and Dropbox and these kind of places to FTP to them, take special connections 
And that's what you get with FileZilla Pro. And they have a ton of them, Web Dave. I mean, there's just, you can look at it on their website. They have a ton of different connection protocols that they have. And so if you're going to be doing a lot of that, like maybe you use, we use S3 for video streaming quite often. Well, if I want to just be able to use my FileZilla to FTP those files back and forth, then I need to have the pro version so that I have the right protocol to connect to S3 or WebDave or Dropbox or whatever it might be. So that's a great question. The, it's, it's the, the answer is, what do you need to do with FileZilla? And if, if you say, I need to connect to some of these cloud storage place sp spaces, then yes, you do need FileZilla Pro. And by the way, I, do, I don't even, I can't even tell you at the moment what the price is of it, but it's very affordable, just like any of our other open source softwares. They have the free freemium and then they have a pay for. It is a very inexpensive rate, in my opinion, to have the pro version of this. Um, and so if you need to make those kind of connections, it is well worth every penny, and especially if you already use that tool, you know that tool. It's way easier than trying to go through like the S3 interface online or something to do the uploads and downloads. So I suggest you get the FileZilla Pro and then you can do it just like you're used to doing for FTPing files. It is 19 bucks. Oh, thank you. I see, I told you it was very inexpensive. Question from Manfred. Is there a way you'd recommend to download HT access files? He's always having problems with having to rename the file on the server and then download to the Mac because Macs always have a problem with the hidden uh, the dot at the beginning of the file name. Mm -hmm. Because you typically on your Mac probably aren't showing hidden files too. Um, and so that's why when you download it, it disappears, right? It's just not even there probably is what the problem is. Most people do though, I'm, I'm afraid to say what exactly what you did, which is they will rename that and then they will download it. Personally, what I typically do is I edit it live on the, on the server and then I copy down a, a backup so that I have that. And so I copy down a backup first, by the way, let me, let me say that I bring down, I copy it over to like a, you know, I'll make a dupe of my HD access and call it like dot back. So that I'm backing that up before I make any changes. Right. So I do this on the, on the remote server dot back, and then I'll make my edits to my HD access. If there's any issue, it's real quick for me to just rename that and rename my back, my dot back, back to dot HD access. So if I break something, it's all right there on the remote server for me to fix quickly, but do duplicate it before you edit it, back it up first even if it's just on your uh, remote. But you might want to make the backup, download the backup, then make the edit, make sure everything's okay, make a dupe of that and put .new on it, download the .new onto your, onto your local if you're wanting to have a copy on your local. Um, or you could go into your system preferences on the Mac and say to show me hidden files. But boy, you're going to see a ton of stuff all over your Mac then. Um, and on PC, I wouldn't know how to answer that question. Sorry. <laughs> That one I would have to look up. I'd have to Google that one. Cool. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much, Robbie. That was the last question there. And that awesome. was um, uh, that got people talking and, um, and reacting as much as any other session we've done throughout this conference. Cool. People really enjoyed it. Great. Great. And we're planning on a full uh, FileZilla course on OS training, by the way, next year. So keep your eyes out for that as well, because we're going to go even deeper into some of the things you can do. And we'll even show how to do some of those connections to the cloud servers as well. Awesome. I look forward to the, um, the OS training class on uh, FileZilla next year. All right. And don't forget, save the day on jdayusa.com as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robbie. Thanks. Bye.